Okay, uh, this episode uh, has been reserved, as I've done at the end of each quarter, as a economic update for uh, this one. It will be for the third quarter of 2023. And um, I'm going to walk through a few things. Um, most most of it be things I've covered before, but also I want to put some tools in your hands uh, that you can use to kind of update yourself on how the economy is doing. And, uh, you know, I started this in 2022 because I fully, we had already started a, into a recession, kind of came out of it. And a lot of the reason we came out of it was because of the spending, which is just going to come back to us in the way of inflation that the government has been just spending <laughs> unbelievable it's just i mean government spending is what causes the inflation and i know a lot of executives that uh, you know have been blamed for by uh, senators and you know people in congress in general uh, for they're the price gougers you know that's causing the inflation um, no, government is causing the inflation. And how did they cause it? Well, it was after the great financial crisis, uh, the GFC or the great financial crisis, um, the Fed, instead of letting the economy kind of roll over and take its medicine, uh, bailed it out. And they bailed it out through lower interest rates. And it uh, uh, rolled it out by having um, quantitative ease and easing. And the quantitative easing was just throwing more money into the economy. And, and now we have on top of that the, the government spending. And so when you expand the money supply that's out there, you have more dollars chasing you know, fewer goods. And therefore, inflation uh, takes over. And that, that's a, as simple as ex explanation. I've heard even senators say it's because of companies gouging their customers is what causes it. it's not the government itself is the one uh, that's causing inflation but you know certain um, people in congress believe that more government is going to be the answer to everything that we do and uh, most of the people that i work with don't believe that so um it, Economics 101, I guess, uh, we'll call that. So anyway, I started these updates back in the first quarter of 2022. Like I said, I, I fully expected that we would be in a recession uh, sometime by the end of 2022, maybe 2023. Uh, we continue to kick the, the can down the road because the government continues to spend massive amounts of money. And, uh, you know, it, it's just... You know, it's keeping things running right now, but it's just making things worse the longer we keep kicking the can down the road. And we have a uh, weak Fed. Uh, this, you know, and Powell refuses to call out the spending that is being done in Congress, but continues to raise rates. It's, it's, they're working against each other. I mean, you have the government continuing to increase the spending and you've got the Fed increasing uh, the Fed funds rate, making it virtually impossible for businesses to uh, borrow money. Uh, and I shouldn't say, you know, impossible. So, some companies that I've worked with have are flush with cash. Uh, and so they're in very good shape and, and they will be in very good shape coming out. But a lot of business, especially small businesses, have a lot of leverage, you know, they've got a lot of debt and, and, you know, as interest rates go up to finance that debt is becoming more expensive, making it more expensive for their business to survive, uh, you know, on a daily basis. And, and so, you know, these are, this is the conundrum, right? This is the, the problem that we're facing. Uh, yes, we managed to kick the can down the road some more, uh, by virtue of what we're we're doing uh, from a government standpoint, but the fact that Fed Powell uh, is feckless in his inability uh, to call out as an independent <laughs> entity the federal government for the spending that's causing the inflation that he's trying to fight by raising the Fed funds rate. All right, enough on that. Um, 
so there are some important economic indicators. And what I, what I want to do in this episode is just kind of walk you through some things that you can uh, follow along uh, yourself uh, and, and different uh, websites are these, these, this information is available in a lot of different places. So, you know, for me, I u- utilize uh, something called Trading View. You can get a free version of it. You just have to sign up. And uh, what it does is it helps me, uh, you know, track stocks and things of that sort. But more importantly, there's some key indicators that, you know, I, I follow uh, with in order to get a sense of what's happening from, you know, the econo- from the economy and from the market and the effects of those things. So uh, let me just walk through, uh, as far as TradingView, just go to tradingview.com and you can sign up. It's not a big deal. Uh, there's other places you can find it. You just Google some of these uh, indicators I'm going to talk about. But I want to start with, and just going to the screen here, to, with the 10-year uh, yield. Because the ten-year yield is indicative of really what you know um, borrowing costs are, um, what mortgage rates are, and things of that sort. So if you see the ten-year yield going higher, then um, it, it's it, it's making it more difficult for businesses because they're going to have to then borrow at a higher rate. And uh, this is true also for the consumer, right? So in order to buy a house, you know, where you could lock in, uh, you know, your housing at 3%, you know, a couple years ago, now it's, you know, closing in on 8%. And so this slows the economic activity down, which is what the Fed is, is trying to do Why the government's over here spending. All right, I'll stop that. Um, so... So tracking the 10-year yield tell you a lot. And you can see what happened when the Fed met this week. They did not raise the Fed funds rate, but they basically came out and said, you know, um, we're probably going to have to raise again before the end of the year, you know, and and everybody is waiting for uh, something to break in the economy, uh, whether it's the consumer, whether it's businesses, whatever, and see these rates start start to go down. Now, the Fed rate funds rate doesn't necessarily move with uh, the the ten year yield. It kind of has a mind of its own. And if this ten year yield, uh, you know, and these are these are daily data, but let's take a look at the weekly. It's a little cleaner. You can kind of see that uh, there's you know this this trend that we've been in for a while in an upward trend as far as rates go. And, and technology companies are, are, you know, impacted by this. And so this is just one of the things to follow. Now, my expectation is that this thing will start to roll over. Uh, and there's a, you know, couple different views on this. Uh, some people think like the Peter Schiff's of the world, who is a, you know, he is, a, you know, an economist that he owns his own uh, company too, but saying that, you know, this, this rate's just going to continue to fly, you know, further up. And uh, then you've got Dave the Contrarian, uh, David Hunter, uh, who is, you know, on the other extreme of this is saying, uh, this is going to roll over and start to make its way down to two and a half percent. And we're going to have deflation, which I talked about in the previous economic update. And so this is the, um, this, this is kind of an indicator then it's going to tell us whether we're headed towards deflation or more inflation. Ultimately, both of these, um, people believe that we're going to have, uh, you know, things are going to fall apart and the market's going to run down 50, 60, 70, 80, 90%. And then, um, you know, before a recovery actually happens because the Fed is over tightened over time, they've been forced to over tighten because the government continues to spend money. But uh, so we, this is something to keep an eye on to see what's happening with the 10 year because it's, it's impacting your customers, as you can imagine. Uh, and also uh, something that I want to talk about as far as preparations affecting your suppliers. 
So this is the, the first measure is the 10 year yield. Second measure to keep an eye on is oil because obviously what affects inflation is oil. And if the oil prices continue to go up, then everything gets more expensive because it has to get transported. People have to get to work. You know, there's a whole slew of things happening uh, from an oil standpoint. And to have this number continue to go up is problematic and will we'll, we'll create more and more inflation, you know, as time uh, goes by. So I keep track of oil and, and most, of the, most of the executives I work with, you know, they know oil affects their business in some way. Some of them are in software development, maybe don't think about it uh, in those terms, but you know, software is typically supporting some uh, industries out there that are going to be affected by oil. Um, and then the other, the other ones are the Dixie, as some people call it, or the, the dollar. And the strength of the do dollar makes things that we buy from our trading partners uh, less expensive. Now, expectation here, again, is that uh, this will start to roll over um, and you know, make its way down to you know, 90 or so and then things become more expensive. Um, but it also, uh, you know, strong dollar is headwind for the economy. Cheaper U.S. goods then potentially could uh, increase uh, activity. This continues to go up. American goods get more expensive and starts to collapse out. So extremes either way are probably not good, you know, from a, from a dollar perspective. And then the other things that, I think people should monitor. And this is on a website called tradingeconomics.com. And you can, you know, go in here and select the U.S. as far as the countries go and the impact. They usually put it on the two stars there. And then I can kind of watch things that are important measures. So if we look at, for instance, one of those measures is, is uh, non-farm payrolls, right? So, and this is, this is a, a very frustrating number <laughs> because they, the government continues to uh, overestimate the number of jobs that are being created. Now, whether that's on purpose or not, that's, you know, you can get into all kinds of conspiracy theories associated with that. Um, but they have been over-reporting it, and then a month or two later, they're uh, retracting those numbers down. Um, but the damage is already done because people will trade and do different things off of the number that's reported, including the Fed, um, making their decisions with, with what is referenced as a lagging uh, indicator. But with these revisions down, the number of new jobs being created is uh, insane. Uh, and you can see even in the note here, the U.S. added 187,000 jobs in August 23 compared to the downwardly revised 157,000 July. And so you can see, I mean, it's very frustrating. I've never seen these numbers be so far off and then have to get revised down, not by one or 2,000, but by tens of thousands. So it's kind of one of those measures that you, you can keep track of, but you got to know that the government's probably going to come back in later and revise them down. Um, so that's that's the non-farm payroll. And then the other thing, obviously, is the unemployment rate, you know, and knowing what that is, it's, it, you know, it ticked up here to 3.8 percent. And that's probably even with a number that's, <laughs> you know, under uh, you know, over reported as far as the non-farm payrolls go. But anyway, th these are a couple of numbers to keep track of because obviously, you know, if the unemployment rate starts to go up, it's telling you things are getting worse uh, in the economy and uh, people are losing their jobs. And then, you you know, there's other things you can look at here. You know, one other one is initial job jobless claims and uh, initial jobless claims uh, have actually been trending down. Uh, I don't I haven't seen any revisions or know if they actually do uh, any revisions on this particular number. Maybe they should, but regardless, um, 
it's been a number uh, that's been trending down. And so the Fed keeps thinking, OK, well, if there's all these jobs and and uh, nobody's filing for, you know, uh, jobless claims, then we got to continue to raise rates and it continues the cycle. So those are things that uh, I think people should keep track of. And the one thing that I'm starting to see more of uh, show up, and, and this is kind of a preparation, and I covered this, I think, in the second quarter of 2022. I went through some things you can do to prepare uh, for uh, an economic downturn. And uh, I laid those out, so you can go back to that episode. Uh, I have a playlist on my YouTube channel. Uh, so if you look up the effective executive and you'll see a list of things, there's home. And then one of the options is a uh, playlist. There's a playlist called um, uh, you know, economic indicators or economic, economic updates. And you can click on that and you can see all the previous quarterly updates that I've given. And uh, so that's, you know, from a preparation standpoint, the, th the thing that I'm seeing more of right now is small suppliers. And not necessarily small, but, you know, and small can be 150 plus company uh, still or, you know, 150 people, you know, on up. And, uh, you know, even into a thousand were these interest rates, which is one of the reasons why I think you should track the 10 year. Uh, to know that, you know, some of these companies are highly leveraged, lots of debt, and, um, you know, this is affecting the health of suppliers. So some suppliers are starting to get uh, beaten up uh, because their financing for the debt that they have for the payroll or for whatever else is making it more expensive for them to do business. And so... You, the expectation is you'll start to see bankruptcies uh, start to rise. So, you, so it's important to have a good relationship with your suppliers or partners that you're 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 dealing with, uh, so that you can uh, have a conversation about you know a going concern because if you can be left high and dry, whether whether you're a restaurant, you know, trying to get food or you're trying to get some um, company um, that supplies you some raw materials or some type of finished product, you know, for the products that you make or, you know, even from a services perspective, you know, there's, can, can your consumers continue to afford your services? Um, because things are, are more expensive now to, to fix a home if you're in that business. Uh, and really anything else that's out there will be affected by increasing rates ultimately. And so that's that's kind of the state of things. And something I've seen more of is the health of suppliers. Uh, I have uh, people very concerned about whether their suppliers will be able to survive uh, what's going on. But the worst thing you can do is not ask the question. You know, they may say it's none of your business, but I don't know that too many I've never found I shouldn't say never but most 90 percent plus of suppliers are going to be honest with you about what's going on uh, with their business uh, the other 10 percent maybe if they're not telling you the truth <laughs> are ones that you don't want to be doing business with anyway so that's that's what I wanted to cover in this quarterly update kind of give you some things to follow um, uh, online uh, ways to follow them and keep track and, and know what which of these things are going to affect your, your business most. You know, we've run in for a long time, we've had a shortage of workers uh, for, you know, different jobs. And that shortage of workers uh, obviously increases what you have to pay, um, even getting, you know, people to come in. But as that starts to dissipate, we know that you know the unemployment rate starts to go up, and uh, non-farm payrolls start to go down. That uh, uh, you know there'll be readily available workers, but there's no work. <laughs> so that, that that's 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 the conundrum there. Um, so anyway, that's what I wanted to cover in this economic update. Remember, there is always a better way. <laughs>